Hi. Um, basically now the roll cage mounting points have all been welded in. Uh, so now the cage itself has been welded on top of those. Um, they said I was putting steel flanges so that they had something for this part of the cage to weld to. So basically I put brackets in all the places where they would meet. Uh, so when I skim the aluminium I've got a, uh, a riveting face for it. So now it's, it's all TIG welded on. Had to remove the diagonal from the uh, back of the cage. It was designed for left uh, for right hand drive so apparently it was it peaks at the driver's head. Uh, so basically now we need to do it from this direction whereas previously it was welded there to there. So I'm going to water some more seamless tubing and then reinstate it in the right side. It just allows the driver's seat to go all the way back if needed. <coughs> to relax his head that little bit further back if he wants to. Um, realistically it's more for seat than it is for anything else. Um, but, you know, it should support the driver's head. Because passengers are immaterial, they're just extra weight, you've got to carry it around. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> so, yeah, all the points are now nicely tigged on. I say have a nice nailing face all the way around and then weld it on the inside of here as well. Um, it also kind of, to be telling us, if you see the amount of tubes that um, basically terminate at this point, it's also nice to have that plate there. It kind of gives, it just spreads all the load around. Instead of having the individual tubes welded up, it actually spreads the load quite nicely. Actually, to be honest, I've missed a trick here. Should I should weld, just a tack weld on there and there. And I'll do that later. So yeah, that's all on, um, from Bulkhead, I couldn't actually get in to um, all of these points here with the TIG, it's just not impossible, especially with, especially with the flooring, um, so I kind of cheated, I've just uh, MIG welded those, um, they're in a push load, so. but anyway around it's probably just as strong as TIG, but to be honest, it's made it way easier to get in there with a MIG than it does with the TIG weld, but you still produce you know, a pretty good quality weld. So. so yeah, really next stage as far as the chassis is concerned is to actually start welding the, um, and fabricating the tabs for the suspension points, um, one, two, three, four. Now the wheels have been ordered, uh, so wheels and tyre package will be coming up from Florida hopefully sometime in the next probably month. I don't know how long they take to uh, do the wheels. Uh, we've got to have this gold, the uh, centre's painted gold. Um, just a kind of homage to the old BBS uh, multi-spokes, but they'll be a little uh, a little lighter, but also single piece, port, single, single piece forgings. So uh, let's turn the welder off, it might be easy. Ah, there you go, not so much noise. Um, there'll be a single piece forging with a nice chrome three inch lip. So instead of having wheels like this that really kind of, they don't have a dish in here, it's more modern style. It's a higher ET and basically pushes the wheel further in and the, <coughs> the uh, kingpin handle comes further out. So you end up with a, a lot lower scrub radius, lower effort, low jacking. The wheel pivots more around its center instead of moving a lot more forward and back and altering wheelbase left and right whenever you steer. <coughs> Um, that's the more modern style, um, albeit we've got a scrub radius. This, has, this car actually has a scrub radius with a nine and a half inch rim, has a front scrub radius of about 28 millimeters, 28 to 30 millimeters, can't remember exactly, but this car will have a 40 millimeter scrub radius, which is okay, that's fine. Um, previous cars like said Ultima at the back there had a scrub radius in the five inches range, so <coughs> 40 millimeters is still nothing. <coughs> How we've achieved that and still got a three inch lip on the wheel, Basically, we've got to an 11 inch front rim. It's a 13 inch rear and 11 inch front. And on the 11 inch front, obviously, we've got more wheel on the outset. <coughs> and the center of the wheel slightly dished this way, so it allows us to get a nice, sort of polished three inch lip, um, which will give it a, uh, a more retro look, to say. Uh, but the front and the rear wheel will basically end up with a three inch lip, which is cool, which is what I wanted. Something that looks, makes it look a little bit more retro in the wheel. <clears throat> but it's still a single piece forged, so technically it is very strong and therefore um, should be good enough for 
Alberta potholes, as we say. Um, once the wheels arrive, um, just because I'm going to be paranoid that I want to make sure that we've got the exact uh, wheel placement inside the wheel arch, um, I'll lift the chassis up to its uh, road height, um, actually just plonk the wheels on the, uh, um, on the bed, and we'll plonk the bodywork on top. Um, take a few arty shots or at it, might as well. <coughs> um, and then I'll measure exactly what hub to hub dimension we want to get the wheel fitting inside the wheel arch exactly where we want it. <coughs> I can then go back to the CAD drawings with that exact dimension and then we can figure out um, the exact length of the wishbones that we need. Um, so before we've already done the geometry on the front <coughs> um, but realistically I can move the wheel in and out in each without altering uh, uh, hardly anything to the geometry itself. All you end up doing is a top wishbone points. You'll probably, <coughs> depending on the length of the wishbone, the top wishbone points might be moved up or down a little bit just to keep the effective, scrim arm, uh, effective swing arm length. And the roll centers uh, at roughly about uh, 45 millimeter above ground. <coughs> um, and then we'll do the same with the rear. We'll do the final sims on them. Then, then we're really gonna be going um, obviously on the front itself we have uh, I'm going to order some plate tomorrow we have the pair of billet front uprights oh, there we go so these are now done um, got some drilling ops to do here and a machining op on the bottom 24mm hole to make a peg pin for the bottom um, bottom ball joint Basically, the front uprights uh, are probably an hour and a half away from um, being ready to bolt up as such. <coughs> Wheel bearings are on order, they should be here next week. Um, so, we've got to order some um, aluminium plate for the top. We'll get some 7075, probably half inch plate, and machine it down. Um, and then we can do the top plates for the ball joint and steering rack. <coughs> Realistically, um, I'm really waiting to make sure I get the exact, say, um, positioning of the uh, the uprights to the, in relation to the chassis, left or right. Once I've got them, once I've fixed these in space and I'm dead happy with them, realistically, a lot's going to happen very quickly. Um, I will be able to determine the uh, uh, the correct uh, steering rack length to get zero bump steer. Um, then I can order the steering rack. I'll order the rest of the bits and pieces. I have ordered a load of bushes. Um, still debating whether I'm going to use rubber bushes because this is going to be primarily a road car, primarily a sort of show and shine, a fast road car. <coughs> yes, I'm, I would be disappointed if the owner didn't take it to the track at some point, but um, realistically, it's, a, uh, it's going to be a fun road car. It's going to try and twist somebody's necks as they drive past and figure out what the hell just went past them. So. <coughs> um, so yeah, I'm kind of running out of little things to do. I can play with the steering rack and stuff tomorrow. Uh, sorry, the steering column tomorrow, get the brackets and stuff faced for that. We have the seats and whatever else I can. Cut out the steel for the, for the floor. I can do that as well. So I've, I've got another two, two or three days work that I can put into it, but then I'm starting to run out of uh, um, extra stuff. I don't really want to hang the bodywork completely off the car yet. Um, do have some re-engineering. I hate these uh, door hinges at the top. They stick out, literally the bodywork. These two stick out of the bodywork itself. It's great for a race car in the 80s. Not much cop for a, a smooth road car now. So I've got lots of little bits and pieces to do, but really dive on and keep the, get the chassis to a roller. I'm kind of waiting to, just to confirm that the wheels are there. And then I can dive on with the front suspension. <coughs> Finish the geometry, order the steering rack, uh, and then get on with the machining or the billet stuff that I need to do for the rear. Uh, hopefully the gearbox will be here circa probably Friday, if not uh, Monday of next week. Um, but to be honest, I already have the sort of CAD uh, accurate drawings of the gearbox, so I've pretty much done all the bits and pieces I want to do at the back. Uh, yeah, it's, it's moving on. Um, so we do have the, the aluminium, one inch aluminium plate, which, which will, in that couple, which will become the adapter between the engine and the front 
or the rear of the bulkhead of the chassis, but I want to get the back end finished uh, and on before I really do that, because that's the final attachment to the car. <coughs> Realistically, I'll probably have the engine and gearbox and the adapter all bolted together and in position at the correct height before I make the bars that will connect basically the engine and transmission to the, to the body. Anyway, I'm raveting on. <coughs> there we go. Um, more chassis work done, and uh, I shall speak to you soon.